to the YouTube. Today I'm doing a video review on this Vivor 4 gallon lithium ion backpack sprayer. So I purchased this after paying someone to spray my house for ticks. Um, I paid 80 bucks to have someone spray a half acre. So I figured I'd spend 80 bucks on this and do it myself the next time. Pretty simple to use once you get it assembled. Uh, speaking of which, <clears throat> I had to contact the company because I couldn't figure out what washers went where. Um, so the instructions that came with it had this nondescript parts list and then the actual black and white printed manual <clears throat> that came with it only had installation of the spray bar and nothing about the o-rings. I don't know how this ever got past quality control but um, I contacted the company they reached out to their engineers and they figured out which o-ring goes where and they made a newer manual which should be on their website soon and if it's not here's the manual telling you what o-rings go where basically on the top of the sprayer here there's a gasket already installed so you don't have to do that uh, on the bottom of the sprayer though you need to install the smaller o-ring so this little guy let me take it apart and show you Whoa. so this little o-ring here goes inside of the fitting and then you screw it onto the bottom of the sprayer here you'll note that the end that attaches to the wand swivels nicely it has these little like the little grip so you can um, tighten it and loosen it without a wrench but notice that this side has this and swivels oh so easily but the tank side has a static fitting this does not rotate at all which is horrible because if you're ripping around on this wand this will come loose so what I did was really crank down on this and finally I got to the point where this didn't work itself loose when I was walking around the yard so this should really have a swivel if Fivor is watching. Assembly complaints aside, what you get for $80, I actually paid $81 on their website. If you go to Viver.com and buy this, there's no sales tax. Whereas if you bought it on Amazon.com, you'd have to pay sales tax. So if you get anything out of this video, uh, buying it through Viver directly avoids sales tax. But yeah, you get all this stuff for around 80 bucks and you don't have to pump your <laughs> uh, pressure sprayer anymore which it's actually the reason I called the bug sprayer guy because I didn't feel like pumping that every five seconds and spraying the yard but yeah this thing uh, definitely worth it if you spray your yard for ticks or you spray for weeds or anything the battery meter isn't quite a battery meter if anything it's more of like a strain gauge on the motor because it senses the voltage drop from the battery if that makes sense um, so when you're in the normal when you're on N you're good to keep using it um, if you're on red that means there's probably a clog and you're over bolting um, but the manual actually is pretty clear about that so if you're looking at it and you don't see H illuminated that isn't because it's dead it's supposed to always be N until it's low. If you have H, there's something wrong. So. so it comes with this charger, simple enough, it has a little charging light on it. When you plug it in and then plug this into the unit, the light turns red, it turns green when it's fully charged, simple enough. It comes with this lithium ion battery that looks suspiciously like a 12 volt UPS battery but I'm not gonna tear it apart and check it. Looks like it's made by 
Ying Pal lithium batteries. You know, quality Ying Pal there. I would wager most of the cost of this unit is this battery. It's really heavy. Um, and then when you actually fill this thing with four gallons, I don't recommend filling it with four gallons unless you really need to. Um, it's really heavy uh, putting this on your back. So this wand holder thing that they give you here, um, yeah, pretty useless. If you put your wand in it, you put your wand in it when you're using it, unless you are a trapeze artist, you will not be able to get that wand out again. Um, it's more for storage, I believe, not so much for use when you're walking around. So when I was using it, if I needed to store this to do something, I just stuck this handle in my pocket and it kind of held out in my pocket like that. Comes with this nice metal telescoping wand. Unscrews like so. Ugh, telescopes like so. It comes with the plastic wand as well. It's a little bit lighter weight, but Definitely more fragile, so I'll probably be sticking to the telescoping wand all the time. It's got a power switch on the side, speed control knob, on, off. Simple enough. This also turns it off if you go all the way down. I don't know why they do that, but it does. Here's the product label. You have to put the backpack straps on yourself. The bottom's easy enough. They just clip on through the holes. The top, you have to take the lead and loop it under here, over the middle, and through the bottom here. If you've ever put together anything that uses a strap, you should be able to figure that out. The handle for the unit is also the lid, which is kind of sketchy. Uh, when I had this full of four gallons, I kind of felt like it was going to rip this lid right off the container. Um, even though I had this screwed and I verified I didn't cross thread it. It doesn't feel like this lid is strong enough to hold uh, four gallons of liquid. Alright, take the top off here. Um, it does have a little strainer that works really, really well. I had some dirt in my uh, termite solution and this caught all the dirt. And when I was filling it, this didn't impede the flow of water enough to make it overflow. Um, so that's a good, good quality filter here. Inside of it, nothing to write home about. This is actually soft and it presses against your lower back. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, now um, I'm gonna get to the actual testing footage now. I'm gonna test each one of the sprayers except for this one, which I forgot about because I'm never going to use it, because why would you? I'm also going to show me walking around the house and spraying and all the different patterns. And Anyway, just keep watching. Luckily, we're grading around our house right now, and I can show you guys all the different spray patterns in this topsoil. This is the spray pattern from this attachment. All right, here's the spray pattern from this attachment. Kind of leaking. Okay, so the mic battery died, so I'll have to bear with the background noise. Um, this attachment is nice because it's adjustable, like the squirt bottle, like a hair sprayer that you would use. You can have a spray, like a solid spray, or you can tighten it up and get a, a spray like, like, a, like a hairspray bottle. You got your solid stream and then you got your mist. I think this might be the one I use the most. All right, now we got this heavy duty brass mister. Oh yeah, that's nice. Whoops. I got it on the camera. This is definitely for watering plants, I think, the way that it's steaming. 
now we got this adjustable one that's made out of brass. Wow, this one really sprays. Quite a distance. Oh, this one mists pretty good. So, we just need a small mist area. Or a stream. I think if you're misting plants though, you'd probably stick with the three, the one that has three tips. The brass one that has three tips. Because, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, except this one has the stream option. And then the last one, the plastic double red sprayer. It's got less mist, more... I really don't know why they needed to include so many attachments. A lot of them serve the same purpose for the average DIYer. And professionals could have just ordered the right one. I would have rather saved a couple bucks and not had so many attachments. A little helpful notice if you're using this for the first time and you're a noob like me, if you've been spraying and you have the telescoping wand extended and you're spraying something poisonous, make sure that you unscrew the cap and let it drain first because this is what happens when you push in the telescoping wand. I have water in it right now, but I, it would have been really bad if I had my uh, pesticide in here. So telescoping wand unscrews and then you push it in and you get spurted right in the face so maybe I'll save someone's face it's always good to save face alrighty uh, I am using this to spray my foundation before I finish grading using an insecticide to keep termites away and ants spiders spiders it's very nice not to have to worry about pumping this now to test and see how long the battery lasts I have rigged up this bucket. Um, I'm using a sprayer nozzle because I want to reflect the same type of usage that this would see in the real world and if I just took the nozzle off there would be no back pressure working against the pump so the battery test might not be accurate that's why I'm using this but this will probably be very messy so I have a five gallon bucket and I have 4.2 gallons of water in here it does have the handy graduations on the side that say what each level is but you can barely read them so once I clean this up I'm gonna use marker to write what each line is because you can barely see like that's 12 liters that's a three gallons but yeah anyway batteries fully charged Gonna depress the wand after I flip it on. Where's the switch? Turn this thing up to full power. Test number one. Oh. Hmm, it's not as messy as I thought. That's the end of test number two. Commencing test number three. 
Alright, it's the end of test three. This is lasting a lot longer than I thought it would. Alright, start of test number four. That's the end of test number four. There are four tests. The battery is not very warm. There's a smell coming off of it. It smells like sneakers. They're a shoe store. Can't explain that. Um, undersides cool to the touch. The only warmth is right around this area here. I'm only going to do five tests. I'm not going to test this all night. It's getting a little tedious. And if you're using more than 16 gallons through this thing, you're probably a professional and need to buy a gas powered one. Or test it yourself. And see how many gallons per minute this thing can do. Fifth test with no nozzle on the end. Just in case you're curious, let's see how much it leaves in the bottom of the tank on the level ground. Pretty much nothing. After all that testing, it's a little warm right here above the charger port, but battery's cool, hasn't caught fire, and that's uh. 20 gallons through this bad boy, one charge, and it could probably go for more, but I think I'm going to call it. I don't think any home user is ever going to go through 20 gallons of chemical, and quite frankly, I don't want to burn my motor out. So, yeah, that's my video. Uh, it's late, so I'm going to go to bed. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.